Tom Sandoval is blowing it at the Vanderpump Rules reunion. He's losing control of Raquel and lashing out at everyone, even production. Welcome back to the Real Couchwise podcast where we overanalyze all things Bravo. Before we get into it, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. So Carrie, part two of the Vanderpump Rules reunion just aired. You know, what are we feeling? What stands out to you at the most at this point? So the biggest things that stood out to me was in contrast to part one, where Sandoval was playing victim, everything is starting to fall apart for him. Like he has lost control of his perfectly curated narrative and he is lashing out at absolutely everyone from Lala and James to production even and then Ariana at the end he is just totally melting down and then in contrast to that Raquel is giving us absolutely nothing uh and is seemingly devoid of emotion (laughs) a bunch of things also happen in between those but that's like the main takeaways for me (laughs) (laughs) those are some pretty good takeaways yeah it really felt just Sandoval was just having like a you know, adult temper tantrum at this <laughs> reunion. <laughs> and yeah, you're right. Raquel was just completely blank in comparison. So we'll break down those kind of moments of uh, all of his meltdowns, starting with the very beginning, right? Like we come off of part one, he's yelling at Lala and Tom Sandoval says that she is a narcissist. And you're like, really, sir? <laughs> I know, way to uh, beat them at their own game there, Sandoval. <laughs> he's just like, it's it's really true. Like what Ariana said is 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 perfect. Like he's throwing everything at the wall just to like see what sticks. He even makes like this horrible comment about how like Lala pulled her IUD when she found out that Stassi was pregnant. Yeah, that was so gross. Oh my God. Right? It's just like, A, like, what are you even talking about? Like, that's yeah. such a horrible thing to say. How would you know that? And be like, in what world is this relevant to this conversation right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like there are just like little moments of that that have been peppered throughout the season that just kind of show his misogyny and like the way that he feels towards um, Lala. It really feels similar to that baby mama and like, you know, baby daddy comment that he'd made at the beginning of the year when he was talking about Randall and, the, and Lala's relationship. Yeah, that's true. He like just threw out all these random like low blows that just Mm -hmm. felt like so childish and like didn't fit the moment at all. Mm -hmm. And then he continued that into like they break for lunch. He goes to Raquel's trailer and he's like, oh, it's rough out there. (laughs) (laughs) Just telling her about how, you know, how what a horrible time he's having. Mm -hmm. And then I don't think that he realized that Raquel was watching the reunion from her trailer. I think he must not have known that. I think he really thought that it was just going to be like her coming into it blind and he was going to get to tell her how it was. Yeah, like you kind of got that sense, right? Because she's like, oh, I've been watching. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, it kind of like goes over his head because he's still kind of like venting about horrible, like how hard it is for him to be out there by himself. Mm -hmm. And then he uh she brings up you know I didn't really love to know like the intimacy parts like you you know you kind of made it seem like you guys were done but like apparently you were still intimate Mm -hmm. which was just like so crazy for Raquel to be saying as well but that's when like I think it clicked for Tom that he's like oh my gosh now I have to have like me and Raquel's story right but now I also Mm -hmm. have a story have to have a story for Raquel about what I'm saying at this reunion and it's weird how like yet again we see him defaulting to his problems with ariana being about fashion right (laughs) and like his example of why they weren't in a good place was that she had always been like no you can't wear that and then when he they were finally in a good place she was like yeah you you got this tom your fashion sense is amazing and he was like what like what is she saying i can't believe it ariana's never like complimented me on my fashion ability (laughs) it was it was so funny it's so weird the best part too is like the the clip that they flash back to to kind of like prove this point and when he like asks for her opinion about an outfit yeah and they're like sequin green pants yeah Yeah, do like these (laughs) sequin green pants or do like these sequin green pants yeah and she says like oh no not those ones you know giving her reaction which is what he asked for yeah and then that apparently is like horrible that's like the drink meme when it's like green like ariana (laughs) having opinion on my fashion no Um, and then she totally changed and she went like oh no tom like you're really good at fashion Mm -hmm. his his words verbatim you're really good at fashion yeah yeah well and it just kind of like brings us back to how he keeps on having such like trivial 
problems with Ariana. Like the things that he's always citing back to are these, like, she wouldn't let me have a party at my house for my birthday. Like, she didn't are you five years old? Paper. <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'll never get over that one. I know. It's grounds for divorce, that's for sure. <laughs> uh I know. Yeah, the 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 scene in the trailer was definitely very enlightening. It was interesting to see kind of like the two of them pick up another scene too after the last like finale that we'd seen them interact with one another um and kind of how awkward and weird that was and this definitely felt that awkwardness like clearly more they wanted more to be happening in this scene they wanted to be able to actually like talk a little bit more openly but they were very cognizant of the fact that these cameras were still on them yeah it was it was honestly very awkward I found that conversation also so enlightening just because I feel like the more Tom says in in when he's trying to put this story together, the more you just see through him, like Mm -hmm. not to like harp on it, but when he's basically saying that when she's saying like, oh, like you're so good at fashion, that's her like being great. That's her doing like a 360 and being like, oh my God, I'm amazing. Yeah. Let's go forever. Like that's exactly what he wants. I just feel like Mm -hmm. it's so telling because like he basically showed his cards right there because he wants someone to just like, be all about him he wants a hype man he wants a yes man like that's he wants a groupie essentially Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's happy when ariana's being that for him and he's not happy when she's not yeah exactly and that's why he needs to have a side chick like raquel who is always gonna say oh my god tom what you're wearing right now is amazing i love your makeup i love your hairstyle you've done such a good job go out and sing your cover band songs like this is amazing you're the best best boyfriend ever it's so (laughs) true sorry i totally didn't answer your question (laughs) oh what was the question um, (laughs) or not question but just like that they're they're cognizant of the the cameras being on them which is is totally true and then i guess i think like now sandoval's starting to kind of like panic and like realize Mm. that his story is not lining up to raquel's and like he has some explaining to do to her, which is when he kind of storms off and has his temper tantrum with Mm -hmm. uh, production, which was just so cringe. This was fascinating to get to see. (laughs) I am so glad that they, that they included this. Um, I think, you know, one of the really fun things that's kind of been happening throughout this season um, and throughout like reality series, like over the last few years as well is the tearing down of the fourth wall and going into kind of like the behind the scenes and even seeing them like breaking for lunch and all of them kind of having their like little conversations, but then having like this blow up from Tom Sandoval at production and making it very clear, like basically saying without saying I need to go talk to Raquel and make sure she's not going to mess this up for me because this is a very pivotal point in the reunion where I need like, I need all the allies behind me that I possibly can. I need to make sure that our story is fully straight. Um, It's so true. Yeah. It's just, it was was good. It was good. He he basically, yeah, he totally did. He's like, I'm I like, this is a very delicate situation for me. Like we want to be able to talk without cameras. Like we feel stressed. Yeah. Yeah. I just love yeah. production. <laughs> well, and that was interesting too, because so, you know, obviously we've talked about how Ariana was saying, you know, he's going to throw out anything that he can and see what sticks. And we see that in this fight, right? He's like, you know, it's illegal for us to not get a break. Like, you know, we just need to be able to like talk in person. Like, and then he's also using Raquel. He's always like trying to like lump in other people for his bad behavior. Like she needs a break. I need a break. Like we need to do this together. She needs a break from sitting in the trailer. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He's like, he just, he needs to glob on to somebody else and use them as an excuse too for why like he's behaving this way he can't just be to be advocating for himself for needing a break he's like she needs a break and i need a break like it's so true and it was just like that producer handled it so well he's just like you can take a break by yourself yeah you just can't be together and like he just like wasn't he's just like that did not make any sense to talk he was just like so angry and he's yeah. just like oh gosh it was so ridiculous yeah he's like swearing mm. he's like chain smoking it's <laughs> like sit down sir like yeah, yeah. well <laughs> and a I, television show like what yeah. do you think is gonna happen well and i think that's a little bit the arrogance too of the fact that this is his 10th season on this show he is one of the longest standing uh, cast members up there with sheena and katie right they're the only three that have been on this consistently as full-time cast members for the last 
10 years. So he kind of thought probably feels like he runs the show a little bit. And clearly he's been running the show very well over the last few years because he's been able to like really curate his relationship despite what he's saying and claiming that Ariana is the one that was, you know, so controlling over their narrative and how they looked like clearly we're seeing in these moments when he is becoming a little bit like unhinged or like unleashing a little bit that he was the one that had a very like, you know, buttoned down, like tight lipped narrative and control over the whole situation right no No, you're you're so right I think this is really showing like just like how unhinged he's getting is showing that he really was the one pulling the strings all this time and now we're getting to see how he acts when Mm -hmm. he doesn't get his way and when the story doesn't go the way that he wanted it to like with Miami girl or like you know all these other stories that we now realize were false that he was planting from the beginning Mm -hmm. and it's just like he's taking it out on literally everyone else around him, Mm -hmm. including Ariana, as you mentioned, that was his next blow up that he had kind of scattered throughout. So we had to Mm -hmm. kind of lump all of these conversations together, which was a little bit difficult (laughs) because the reunion just went in so many different directions. So many different directions. Oh my God. And yet always came back to (laughs) Scandaball. Oh yes. Everyone (laughs) everyone was very in sync in that. Yeah. Um, And you know, like Sandoval called it the get out of jail jail free card. Like whenever someone would kind of do direct in like the the light back onto him Mm -hmm. and to be fair like that's what this reunion is dude like you kept this off camera Mm -hmm. yes there's other things we would have liked to have seen play out I think like I would have liked to have gotten more like of Katie and Schwartz like we we didn't get that much but like this is cathartic for the cast this is cathartic for the audience like you just have to kind of take this pill like this is what the reunion is and you just have to deal with it instead of just like crying about it the whole time (laughs) yeah well exactly and that's the unfortunate thing about the timing of all of this right the scandal all broke and within three weeks they were filming this reunion so tensions were super high and obviously as an audience member like we're enjoying seeing it because it feels so real and raw but for you know, a normal situation, usually they'd be talking about things that happened, you know, six months ago, right? Like September to March, approximately six-ish months. Um, Obviously, it would be usually a lot less heated for them to be having these discussions, but this just happens. (laughs) No, that's it. Like, this is probably the most raw and real reunion Mm -hmm. you're ever going to get, because like, Mm -hmm. it did actually happen, like, so quickly after these like crazy events unfolding yeah well and and as you mentioned too like the emotions between sandoval and ariana being you know that they've just broken up like not only have they just had like this massive you know scandal break they've had this like huge upheaval of their lives of them like ending a nine-year relationship so the, the emotions are very raw there too so i think that we are probably getting the most candid version of their relationship that we have probably ever seen yeah no it's it's very true and honestly like kudos to ariana for even being able to go and like sit you know Mm. next to him um or sometimes she'd be like you're disgusting like look you can address (laughs) the side of my head yeah she just had such good Mm one-liners uh we are ariana stans here uh stans stans (laughs) stans uh if you have not realized thus far (laughs) haven't caught on yet (laughs) but yeah oh man so some of the some of the one-liners that she kind of shot at him that like Mm -hmm. really led to him unleashing like starting with the fact that she's like you know you are you coaching Raquel the rat uh (laughs) like you used to coach me and then to your point of of Tom just be like no you Mm -hmm. he was like no you coached me yeah and she's like well you need it (laughs) Which is true. He does need it. <laughs> like, he does. He does really, really need it. Yeah. He just like kept throwing things back onto her. Another uh, another one that came up to you, I think, is when she's like, I'm going to use the tactic that you showed me, mm-hmm. which is if someone says something wrong about you, don't let them finish a sentence. Yeah. And then he just screams back, that's your tactic. Yeah, that's what you do. Well, and even the things that he was going after her for saying to like him claiming that she had called him dumb and that she had said some the the way that he phrased it was very strange he said I, you know I my, your, your brain don't work too good yeah. or something like that yeah your brain don't work too good like when did you ever <laughs> imagine ariana saying that no i know especially now now like we, we're seeing her wit and her ability to kind of come out with these one-liners like so quickly like why would that ever be the thing that came out of her mouth <laughs> well that's She's i think what's the funniest part much better than that 
Yeah, that's I think the funniest part of this fake narrative that he's put together and how we know it's fake is because like I feel like he did so much to like develop this character in his mind, mm-hmm. but he mm-hmm. didn't do the dude like he didn't put in enough work to make it sound like it's actually Ariana. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that it also calls back to that kind of like childish critique of like everything that Ariana is like doing to him of, you know, not giving him the like the good uh like fashion sense kind of like accolades that he wants um, or, you know, not letting him throw parties at the house. Like all of those kind of like little childish remarks that he's made this, like this dumb comment feels very much on par with that. Right. Yeah. Like I also don't, I can't even see her saying, Tom, you're so good at fashion. Like I can't (laughs) see her putting that sentence together that way. Yeah. Uh, This man is just a liar. Sandoval's a liar. (laughs) Sandoval's a liar. (laughs) We have to say yeah. it at least at least at one least, time. At least once an episode. <laughs> but yeah, when uh when they were saying this whole like tactic thing. Oh no, I don't think it was then. I think it was uh I think it was the point when it's yeah, like slightly later in the episode with yeah. the Sheena conversation. Yes, sorry. Yeah. So there's so many things that happen. Yeah, I exactly. Know. There's a point where Tom says, Oh, we didn't do this maliciously. Mm. And Ariana's like, you better watch what you effing say right now. Yeah. Because like she's all like that would obviously be triggering, right? It's like, oh, mm-hmm. we just cheated on you for seven months, but like we yeah. didn't do it maliciously. Yeah. And he and he's like, Well, it was malicious. I can recognize that it was malicious, but it wasn't done with malicious intent. It's like, okay. <laughs> Like, oh, you're right. Oh, well, that makes we're, it so much better. <laughs> we're overreacting. Yeah. But yeah, so Ariana starts to like snap back, right? And like mm-hmm. she obviously we're seeing a more heated version of her than we've seen in the past. But like obviously yeah. under the circumstances, what else would you expect from mm-hmm. a woman to do in this perspective? Yeah. And he yells back, this is the real you. Like now you yeah. could be the the unadulterated, like pure version of yourself. And like, yeah. I think I literally yelled at the TV at that point. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the weird thing about this argument here is he then says you deserve to be that now you deserve to be unapologetically now um but you were always unapologetically through our relationship which is I I wrote it down I like specifically (laughs) wrote it down because I was like well that's a little bit grammatically incorrect but whatever I can I can kind of understand the like the vibe of what you're getting here but it's just weird that he's saying you deserve to be unapologetically yourself but the version of yourself that is the real you is this person that will never apologize to somebody. And I just, I just don't think that that is who Ariana is from the person that we've seen over the last nine seasons. Um, And just the fact that he's, you know, once again, like painting her as somebody who never apologized to him. He could count on his hand the, like the number of times that she apologized to him in the last like nine, 10, 12, whatever months. Right. Like that's what he's always coming back to as well is, you know, this is unapologetically who you are. And this is the real you that now everybody across the nation is getting to see this version of yourself. Now they all see it, but it's also (laughs) just like, I read that as well as like, he just poked her and poked her and poked her until she kind of like, he blew up and then he yeah. was like ha huh, the yeah. mask is off like we see you like <laughs> yeah. this, you're just a monster yeah like it was just it was oh it was so gross it was gross but and I also feel like him saying you deserve to be unapologetically this version of yourself now is also him still kind of like playing into this you know, facade of him being happy for her and him being happy that she's like going off and having a new relationship. He's happy that, you know, everybody is here to help support her. Like, I think he's still trying to kind of like come across as this like good guy that like is happy with how this relationship has like ended and that like it's all being resolved now. There's just something weird and kind of twisted about his choice of words in this moment, right? Yeah. yeah. He teeters the line, I feel like. Really I feel does. like he went in trying to hold it together. I think he probably tried to do what he did to her um, on that, like, finale episode mm-hmm. where he tried to just kind of, like, play it cool and, like, not yell so that she would yell and then, like, yeah. she would look angry. But yeah. then she'll say something that, like, makes him snap mm-hmm. and then he'll he'll yell and, like, actually Sandoval I think this is the real you and you actually have it twisted like we're actually seeing you because 
he's trying not to pop off but like he's mm-hmm. always been that way like there's always been something that's triggered him and he would like I don't know have like a temper tantrum and like start yeah. to yell at people yeah well and there were moments over the last like seasons when he he wouldn't pop off and he would actually like very happily like stand in being yelled by, by like being yelled at by somebody so mm-hmm. right yeah English. <laughs> um and he he would um he would kind of like grovel in the fact that he wasn't responding to them. Like he loved that, like they were yelling at him and he could just be like sitting back, like cool, calm and collected, just like having them kind of like dig their own grave and like make themselves look bad. And he wants to be able to do that with Ariana, but he's clearly not able to actually do that in this, in this moment. Um, I also thought it was interesting that in in this kind of conversation that he has, um, like in this in this moment is he says i was in fight or flight like i don't i don't understand why you think that at any point over the last seven months you could have been in fight or flight mode that doesn't make any sense right like you had a seven month long affair when within the seven month long affair were you in fight or flight like he was in fight or flight. You were in neither with, fight nor flight. <laughs> that's true. You were just in like lie. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> fight, not, flight, or lie. It's, it's like sit in it, lie in it, <laughs> like try to get Ariana to break up with you. It like none of the actual like fight or flight. Like fight or flight probably would have been a better reaction to uh, <laughs> to how all of this was going down. Uh, uh, this man. Yeah, it was wild. <laughs> he also slipped up and called Ariana a mother effer. Yeah. Um, that finally, finally was too much for Lisa. Lisa was like, yeah. oh, did you just <laughs> say that? <laughs> I will admit that I think that Lisa did at least a slightly better job in the second part of the reunion than the first part of the reunion in not fully backing him and Schwartz and their bad behavior. Um, yeah. She even like calls Sandoval out for... Um, what was it? He, like basically the fact that he's saying that, you know, him and Ariana had had such a perfectly curated version of their relationship oh, that was yes. on screen. And she's like, well, why were you doing that? Like you're on reality TV. So I appreciated that she like then kind of like called into question his like, oh, Ariana was fabricating this version of our relationship and I wanted to tell the truth. And she's like, well, then why didn't you tell the truth? You're on reality TV. You had the perfect opportunity to be able to tell the truth and show who you really are. Um yeah. You made you made the decision to not do that. And then yeah. She did back off, I think, on yeah. on backing them so adamantly a yeah. little bit. I, yeah. I definitely give you that. Yeah. I think that part was interesting too, because even Andy uh went in and was like, you know, Ariana, you've told us about like a lot of your intimacy issues, you've told us about your struggles with your mental health. Like you've actually shared a lot. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of another hole that we see in Sandoval's story yeah is like if anything it's like there's someone who's not sharing things it's you yeah like Ariana has put so much on this show she's been so vulnerable Mm -hmm. so uh, I was happy that Andy at least did that because sometimes I find he'll have setup questions that kind of really easily allow Sandoval to like go into his his perfectly curated narrative yeah like he'll almost set him up the way that Schwartz was doing it Mm -hmm. maybe he's doing it on purpose to have us see this narrative that he's putting out but like Mm -hmm. I liked that in this area he set up Ariana to kind of be like well no I put so much of myself onto the show yeah exactly and we've talked about that in the past too right like she's talked she really has bared a good part of her soul to the audience you know um in in the years that she's been on the show and yes you know we are we've learned that Miami Girl was uh, a, a storyline that she was willing to go along with for Sandoval and there have probably been other times when she has been willing to you know shield certain aspects of their relationship from the cameras um, but for the most part like she's been pretty authentic and she's been you know pretty bold in her ability to kind of like go out there and put put what she's dealing with out there as well. Yeah for sure and then you also have to think of the timing of it too right like Sandoval's going on this story of like oh well I felt bad like we weren't being Mm -hmm. true and like we shouldn't Mm -hmm. be allowed to get away with this and it's like let's say this is true yeah you only had this revelation once you were also 
having an affair you're not putting the affair out there are you yeah exactly <laughs> like you you really wanted to paint your relationship in a bad light as soon as you were having an affair and you wanted your girlfriend to break up with you and you wanted yes. to like you were we wanted to set the groundwork for that it's all just too convenient it is very convenient it's it's yeah Ah, this man <laughs> I think those are most of his tantrums. I think that those are the majority <laughs> of his tantrums. I feel like he like he he definitely went over uh like kind of tried to go after uh, James and Sheena, but I think that we should probably pivot over to uh Miss Little Homewrecker herself. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yes, the the time has come. The time has come. <laughs> it was such a stark contrast of like Sandoval having all the emotions, mm-hmm. never the right ones, but yeah. all of the emotions were there. Um, yeah. Actually, no, uh, empathy was not there. All the other emotions were there. <laughs> anger was there. Um, yeah. And then Raquel, who we've seen cry for an entire season over phasing out of pageants, aging out of pageants, mm-hmm. had no emotion for this entire episode. Yeah, that, oh, that Raquel. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how I feel about Raquel. I, I do worry that like, if she had been as emotional as Sandoval, you know, we wouldn't have even registered it, right? Like we would have been responding to her in the same way that we're responding to Sandoval. Um, True. Like he's obviously like doing absolutely everything and she's doing absolutely nothing. And we don't appreciate either of them for yeah. how they're behaving there so, has to be a middle ground right I like, think that there could be a middle ground but I also do wonder if like Raquel is at least like sitting back in the trailer and like just kind of like processing what she's witnessing right yeah and also like you know I wonder at what points the editors were actually taking her reactions to the screen mm-hmm. you know like That's was true. it actually like were we actually seeing her her react to the points that were we were seeing as viewers I'm not sure but (laughs) she had not one genuine emotion on her face like it was it was wild it was just a blank stare the entire time as if like nothing had happened yeah which I do feel like is how it actually played out because Ariana had said on call her daddy like Raquel was not present like she was somewhere Mm -hmm. else and she wasn't understanding the severity of what she had done at all Mm -hmm. at this point yeah yeah and I think that there might be it might take a while for Raquel to kind of start to understand the severity of what she's done here right like and why she's behaved the way that she has like what she what's maybe happened in her past and how that might be connected to how she behaved in this affair right oh totally yeah and we talked about that a, a couple times Mm -hmm. I feel like while she did not have a huge part in this episode what she like we did actually get a couple kind of like truth bombs from her Mm -hmm. from her interview with Andy Mm -hmm. which before I get into can we please talk about her outfit choice (laughs) (laughs) you know what it reminded me of did you ever watch that Tyra Banks um, movie with Lindsay Lohan I think it was called like Life Size yes (laughs) The movie is amazing. The movie is literally so good. Um, but it's like when Tyra Banks is like this, like for anybody that hasn't seen the movie, which you should go watch it immediately. It's probably to like download it illegally off the internet or something. But um, <laughs> but like Tyra Banks is basically a Barbie character who has come to life. Um, and she decides that she's going to just like go be like a human woman. <laughs> um, and so she like dresses up like all professional, like professional Barbie uh, and like goes and works in an office and like, you know, types gibberish on the, the computer. Yeah. Um, Um, And that's very much the vibes I was getting from Raquel's like outfit choice. It was like, I'm going to be grown up Raquel right now. And so I'm going to wear a blazer. (laughs) I mean, it's so, that's such a good one. I was seeing it as like a person who's going to court and they want to Mm. come off as like an empathetic and like sympathetic person to the jury. Yeah. She's like, I have my blazer and I'm like super well coiffed and like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but then I have to have my like hooker boots as well. (laughs) Oh man, I miss the hooker boots. Yeah, um, she had it with like a thigh high boots, which is like <laughs> that's fine, but it's that's just a look. like <laughs> you're clearly trying to do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, weird. Well, and like, that actually reminds me of um the two seasons ago in Real Houses of Beverly Hills, where Erica like has been like it's been exposed that Tom Girardi's done this whole you know massive. Ponzi scheme essentially of all of his like law clients uh, specifically like a lot of victims of you know horrible catastrophic events including like people who were like yeah plane crash victims and their families uh, orphans of those people um 
And so Erica shows up to a dinner once all of this is kind of broken and she's wearing a headband. And I realize that's a tiny little note, but Sutton like clocks it immediately. And Sutton's like, I see that you're like dressing for court already. Like you're already getting ready for, you know, all of the um, kind of like vitriol and backlash that you're going to face because of like what's just come out. Um, so maybe Raquel should have worn a headband. Apparently that'll make you look, <laughs> look, look a little bit more sympathetic and chi- that's such a, childlike. <laughs> that's such a deep cut. I really that's appreciate really your ability to just like go back into the Bravo <laughs> records and bring them up at any mo- moment in time. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't rewatch uh, all of these seasons of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Southern Charm and Summer House and all of the things for my health. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not because I'm a mentally stable person. <laughs> so I was definitely trying to do something there. I don't think yeah. it really worked. But some yeah. of the things that we learned, um, one of them was just like the levels of her delusion are just mm-hmm. endless. Where Andy was like, How did you think those was, was gonna play out though? Yeah. Like, did you think there was a path forward? And she's like, Yeah, like I did. <laughs> I was living in my own little reality, which is interesting because it's like, no, you're living in your own little fantasy. (laughs) But sure, your own little version of reality. Why not? Well, Ariana had said, like, she's like, I think Raquel is in her own, like, rom-com movie before she knew that all of these things were happening. Yeah. And then I think the more, like, unsettling part is Andy was kind of, like, setting up the question of, like, Tom Sandoval has kind of been saying that it felt like Ariana didn't want to know. Mm -hmm. Like, and I like the way he phrased this. He's like, is that what you guys were convincing yourselves of? Yeah. Uh, To which she basically said yes, which I was actually surprised. She's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of the mentality that I had. Like Mm -hmm. she never, like Ariana never pressed him and Mm -hmm. she took what he said at face value. I was like, Yeah. yeah which I think also like signals how much coaching Raquel has gotten because she's clearly heard this version of the story so much right but what do you mean you took like oh I took what my boyfriend said at face value I didn't I didn't like press into everything my boyfriend said and constantly mm-hmm. thought that he was lying like isn't that yeah. just like the default state that you have in a relationship <laughs> I mean I don't know if Raquel is a great set like has a great sense of like what relationships should and shouldn't be right like her last significant relationship was with James Kennedy and Raquel did kind of like blindly follow James around like a little puppy dog for five years um and took a lot of what he said at face value and she, maybe she yeah that that, that was sense. a life choice yeah exactly so maybe she was just kind of being like well you know I blindly followed James around and just like accepted whatever he told me so maybe that's what ariana is doing too and maybe that's a totally normal thing for a person to do is that they just yeah yeah this is how this is how this works that's true (laughs) yeah it was just like so crazy to hear that that's what she actually had done which i guess makes sense Mm -hmm. we also learned that they needed to get their story straight which i think both of them have kind of slipped up in in letting Mm -hmm. us know a couple times and yeah he was like you know, were you going to, what does that mean? Like, did you have a truncated version of the timeline? Like, were you Mm going to make it seem like you dated for less time? The internet is very shocked that Ariana knew the word, not Ariana, oh my goodness, (laughs) knew the word truncated. Yeah. (laughs) Well, (laughs) did she or was she told the word truncated? (laughs) I mean, the whole interview just came Uh, off very prepped. Like, she definitely... I just kept thinking, like, this is the girl who cried when she had to give a thank you speech at her engagement party. Allegedly, and yet she is, yeah. allegedly, <laughs> she is sitting here, like, with no ums, ahs, buts, stutters. Yeah. Like, she has rehearsed this for sure. Yeah, I think she has rehearsed it for sure. And I think she also doesn't know when she's giving a little bit more away than she thinks she is right they're almost like over prepped that it's just yeah. coming off like too robotic and their stories yeah. are too similar yeah. that it gives it away a little bit too much mm-hmm. he had asked if she was coached as well yeah and then she kind of gave a long-winded answer of like we talk every day but then it <laughs> ended in but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes well and even like the the words that she chooses to say too right I think at one point she's like I need to take accountability and like that is Mr. Sandoval's like favorite word right like is that you need to take accountability I have to get accountability um that's true yeah I wish I was in their prep session I would love to hear (laughs) a little prep session I'd love a live stream of a prep session please (laughs) 
Um, there's also this moment when Raquel is talking to Andy in the one-on-one and she says how, you know, Ariana like called and confronted her about the the affair and she's like basically begging her to tell her what happened um and interestingly Raquel obviously does tell her right like she mentions that you know they did begin to hook up they hooked up right around the time of the girls trip and that's actually you know how Ariana makes the link between you know Charlotte having just passed away and the boys night at the Mondrian and like knowing that that's kind of like the beginning of this relationship um and I just think it's really interesting because Raquel reveals that Ariana said, you know, thank you for telling me the truth because Tom never would have. Um, And I just, I do think that that's maybe why every once in a while I'm a little bit more inclined to give Raquel a little bit of grace um, in in amongst all of this. You know, I think the value of truth in a relationship is, is not something that, you know, should be played with. I think that it is something that is, very important to people to really have like a clear and honest view of what their relationship was like. Um, And Raquel giving that to Ariana um, does kind of like markedly make her feel a little bit different than Sandoval to me, at least. Um, I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah. And and I do feel like she's being more truthful in this interview, even Mm -hmm. if it's kind of by accident, than I think Sandoval has been being Mm -hmm. the whole time. Even like you mentioned that she said, you know, that was my, it was my mindset that Ariana just didn't want to know. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think the way that she phrased it kind of did seem like that it shouldn't have been. And, and hopefully it's not anymore, but as you're saying that it kind of also made me think of that scene with uh, Ariana and Sandoval, Sandoval, Why Sandoval. I keep, I keep <laughs> weird like British pronunciations of words today. <laughs> Did you hear about Tom Sandoval, <laughs> Raquel and the jacuzzi? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that scene uh, that after they picked up filming and, mm-hmm. Oh no, it's not. It's not even with. It's not even with Sandoval. It's actually with uh, Ariana and the girls. And she says okay. that uh, Raquel had said it was just a kiss that night mm. in the car, the first time that they had hooked up. Yeah. But then Tom had let her know that no, it wasn't just a kiss. They actually yeah. like fully had sex. Yeah. So in 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 Raquel's car say? while Ariana yeah. was sleeping in bed and mourning the loss of her dog, and then Tom yelled at her because she'd locked the door and locked him out, even though he was the one that didn't bring a key. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> I know. So so that's why I'm just like I don't know how much grace we can really give her. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty fair. I do think I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold out a little bit of hope for Raquel. I think that you know even throughout this interview, she's been able to identify that you know Ariana is hurt Ariana was in pain like she's admitting that there are things that she's done that have been painful for Ariana and that she's made a mistake um and even you know it makes me think about the uh the flashback the um or I guess the deleted scene that they had at the end of the finale where Raquel and Tom are at Raquel's apartment and Tom shows the video of like all the people at <laughs> there were people I don't know why I put that in air quotes uh, all the people at his house and you know he's all upset because Ariana uh, would never have let him throw a party he w- she wouldn't even let him throw a birthday party which is just such a lie because we know that he they always had parties at that house yeah. um and in that moment Raquel's response to seeing that all these people have like come to Ariana's ha- house is like that's great like it's good that she has people around her right now so True. you know I just think that there are like little moments where Raquel is while still quite robotic and emotionless it, that we've seen so far th- in the reunion um I still think that there's just there's little differences between her and and Sandoval's way of managing this situation and reacting to this situation um and Sandoval is just taking any opportunity he can to like get another little jab in at Ariana about like not letting him have parties and you know being yeah, an awful true. person um and you know like we're also kind of seeing how he's very defensive at this reunion and he's making yes. sure that any opportunity he can he can make himself out to be a victim he will and any opportunity that he has to make somebody else into a villain he will also do that Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. And, and that's... Raquel's just not taking that approach at all. No. But no. she, but you almost think, 
not to say that she should paint herself as a victim, but we said this mm-hmm. before, like, if you would think that she would more kind of go against Sandoval and be like, she was, you know, in a really fragile state and like mm-hmm. Sandoval was there for that, ha- for her, but she's really just still so far deep in this relationship with him at this yeah. point that she's not really going to go against him, even that's, to yeah. her own detriment at this point. Yeah, I think that's the issue. And I think that like, if we do see Raquel in a season 11 or a version of season 11 that we we might get, um, I do kind of hope that like whatever work she's been doing at this mental health facility will recognize the kind of like the spell that she was under by Sandoval and how controlling he really was of her um, in all of this, right? Yeah, it's just so, it's so toxic. Like it's not a situation that she should be in for sure. No. The other thing that stands out to me still though is just like to your point like her lack of emotion in just like everything mm-hmm. and I feel like nothing shows that more than the scene the the scene with Sheena yeah where Sheena's kind of saying yeah the the distress that this has caused her with the whole restraining order and if you actually I've said this before but like you really feel for Sheena like she's probably like this other than Ariana she's kind of been hit the most by what this is because she really lost two of her best friends as well Mm -hmm. but she's like sitting there and she's breaking down and she's like I can't even be present with my daughter because I'm so concerned over you know having to go to court and all of these things and like they flash freeze or I don't know what the correct term is they they cut the screen and and they have like Raquel on one side and they have Sheena on the other Mm. and Raquel is literally just giving nothing like she's just like that part if that's really how that played out and I kind of feel like it is because I don't think they would split the screen like Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. that is really off-putting yeah that you can see your friend breaking down over the cause that you've paid that you've the cause oh my gosh I'm so tired (laughs) over the the pain that you've caused them Mm -hmm. and you can feel literally nothing like that's why you're like what is happening to Raquel like this isn't normal behavior Mm -hmm. yeah and and that's just it like even the kind of uh, the versions of the events that we've heard of the night that Sheena did find out and Raquel being like very cavalierly saying yeah I was having a seven-month affair with Sandoval like like there there does seem to be a little bit of a disconnect in her and this relationship and how she's like playing all of these things out with all these different people right like just to be so matter of factly yeah I was having an affair with Sandoval for the last seven months and Ariana just found out and and here we are and you know you're breaking down I've done this restraining order to you I've done this like you know it, her her like dismissal of the restraining order that she's given to Andy like probably the day before when they take those one-on-ones you know knowing that a dismissal filed the day of the taping is never going to come into effect in time for them to be able to to actually tape the reunion together and that's it's like completely like useless like it, it, there's there's no weight to this document that you've allegedly filed with the courts on this day um, yeah and yeah. I even remember, I think the Bravo doc had covered this a while ago, like when we had gotten news that she had been served these papers during mm-hmm. the reunion, that mm-hmm. that's not how you go about dismissing a case. Like, I think mm. it's like the only way at that point, once it's been set in motion, I think yeah. is to just not show up. Right. So at that point, like there was no kind of stopping it. Yeah. I could be mis- like, I could be misinterpreting that because of No, memory. I think you're right. Yeah. But yeah, so like, because I remember at the time, like her camp was trying to put out that like, oh, well, we, you know, dismissed it. And like, mm-hmm. but Sheena's team took too long to answer. So like, yeah, it's not our fault that they can't be together at the reunion when that mm-hmm. was just like so false. Yeah, exactly. Well, and also like the the camp had been saying that, I guess Raquel's camp had been saying that they had told Sheena's camp that they weren't going to show up. But Sheena's camp was like, well, that could be like a tactic in which like you tell us that you're not going to show up. So we don't show up. And then you do actually show up. And then we're not there to defend ourselves. Like we have to show up no matter what, because until this is officially dismissed, like we have to do our due due diligence. Um, And like, yeah, like it's just it, it, it was completely the wrong move on so many levels for Raquel to do this and for her to be watching Sheena like have this very emotional breakdown and you know, have done all of this other stuff around it, this all hullabaloo, um, you know, it, it is unfortunate that she's 
thus so unreacting and like I, I don't know what Raquel's right response should be when she's hearing Sheena talk about her daughter and herself and the hyperventilating and all of the the issues but um I don't know if like just continuing to like apply your lip gloss or your mascara or whatever it was that she was doing in that moment or, or was, that, was like, the move. <laughs> oh, I should have given her a handwritten note. Yeah, um, a personal thinking, letter. Yeah, a personal like, note. There's more realizations and more regrets. Like as if you didn't know saying, that a restraining order was like a serious thing. <laughs> it's so crazy. Even um, I think when she was talking to Andy and she's just like, I have a lot of shame. And she mm-hmm. delivered that line with the least amount of like anything I could have right. ever seen like yeah I was like do you have shame because it sounds like you're just kind of like ta- like someone wrote this down for you and you're just yeah citing it like yeah I think we just want to see her take accountability and like be empathetic and like mm-hmm. feel bad for what she's done and like she's just not bringing any of that emotion yeah. it's yeah. just like it's so so strange to watch and yeah. I can't imagine how it would feel for like Sheena and Ariana like even just watching someone else cry makes you kind of want to cry. Like it's it's mm-hmm. almost like a reflex yeah. reaction. Like it's hard not to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think that that kind of also goes back to like this immaturity that we've seen from Raquel, like throughout the series and throughout this season. And then also throughout the scandal, kind of like all breaking, right? Like a lot of this has been, you know, we've heard rumors about kind of like how involved her family is and how her family's pushing her to do certain things and how Sandoval is pushing her to do certain things. And she's not kind of like authentically standing in her own version of the truth and standing in her own kind of like decisions. Even when Andy um, brings up like, do you want to come back next year? Uh, She says, you know, I want to come back, but it doesn't really seem like it's a decision that she gets to make. Right. Like it feels like there's like too many other like forces in her right. ear that are like contributing to that and, and it is unfortunate that as a 28 year old woman you're still at the point where you don't feel like you get to make the decision of like well yeah I'm gonna come back if, I, if you guys ask me back I'm back like 100 percent or like you know the fact that like the restraining order maybe wasn't your choice like maybe doing all of this wasn't your choice I don't know I don't know if was, I don't know if I have a resolution to that one but no I'm just grappling with it I know it it was so strange like it it's just so crazy to be watching these things play out like not in yeah. real time but like yeah we knew like we saw it we were watching it all like we heard the news break and then we're mm-hmm. now seeing it on on tv like a few months later and yeah. it does just feel so much more real than a lot of the things I think we've seen in the past mm-hmm. so I get it like it's it's very confusing yeah the Sheena um the Sheena segment as well something that was like obviously stood out to a lot of people is <laughs> when Andy asked uh Tom Sandoval what he thought happened between Sheena <sighs> and Ariana and then there was the longest pause that has ever been <laughs> recorded on television <laughs> oh my god yeah and this kind of come back comes back to like Sandoval attempting to make himself the victim and in his narrative or his version of this is that he then has to make other people the villain for that to successfully work right like he can't himself make himself look more like victim e and like sympathetic that he's gonna do whatever he can to make sure other people look also really bad that's true the part that just made me so angry about this though is that like this is a legal matter dude like mm-hmm. at this point it had it like sheena still had to go to court like and then he's like oh I just want to tell the truth like yeah. this actually could have so yeah. many like ramifications on Sheena like I don't think anyone thinks that she punched her he mm-hmm. wasn't even there to actually hear that that's what happened like mm-hmm. the fact that this is the hill that you're going to die on is just like so disrespectful Sheena's been her friend for years like I was just yeah. like what are you doing like this goes beyond a reality television show like it was just so hurtful yeah one him saying like I'm between a heart or a heart <laughs> I'm between a rock and a hard place like I don't want to upset my relationship with Sheena but I want to tell the truth like it's just it's so unusual because a why would you care about not upsetting your relationship with Sheena when you clearly know that you don't have a relationship with Sheena anymore as Um, Ariana had stated yeah you don't have a relationship with Sheena idiot (laughs) (laughs) but also like thinking that you're I don't I don't really understand why he felt the need 
to carry on this version of the narrative that this interaction had happened the way that Raquel has portrayed it, right? Like why Raquel's like version of events being that she was punched needs to then be like supported by Sandoval. I think it's because he just needs like he is now on team Raquel and he just is going to go on to team Raquel because he's not team Ariana and I guess that's the other side yeah but yeah it's like just keep your as Sheena said keep your (laughs) mouth shut yeah that's just it like don't have a three minute long pause where we're all just like what are you doing and even Lisa's like why are you not saying anything (laughs) like and like don't act all like torn up inside that you're like having to you know oh I have to tell the truth because you know I've always been this purveyor of truth in this in this cast um when in fact like we all believe that you are lying right like Raquel didn't show up to court a couple of days later and like be able to provide proof like in fact she didn't show up to court at all because she was already trying to get this dismissed because she already knew that like this was not going to work and that this is not what happened like yeah so we've it's all like, kind why of are you yeah sitting in this like yeah just, like and why are you oh, claiming, uh, why are you claiming that this is the truth right like yeah this is not the truth <laughs> we know it, it. Was, you, you know it we all know it we all know it and then the last piece too is just like the james and ally segment which yeah. was actually like pretty long i was actually I it was like got more airtime than like katie and schwartz i think they also got just like the most like consistent airtime like i just think that like there were theirs was the only segment that didn't end up kind of like constantly going off track like it still ended up being about james and ally the entire time well i guess because they had brought ally in specifically for that yeah. one segment so it gave yeah. it kind of like a start and an end yeah maybe that's it it yeah. was it was interesting honestly like ali has grown on me so much in mm-hmm. this season yeah and you can even tell like the way that the girls react to her when she comes on they're like hi like you look great and, like everyone yeah. is genuinely like happy to see her yeah she just feels like a very normal person she does and i do even think that like since we've ch- i feel like we've kind of like seen her change a little bit more or like maybe we've seen just her develop a little bit more from the actual filming of the season back in like the summer and like fall when their relationship I guess still would have been like relatively new too right like they were probably like yeah. six months into being together um versus now where they're kind of like they've been together at least like a year and you know I just think that she's really like you know standing her ground um and kind of like being like very truthful and being honest about who she is and you know how she sees this relationship um And I think even just kind of like my feelings about Allie have kind of like developed. I do feel like I kind of like like her more and kind of get her more a little bit now too. Yeah, same. Yeah. The scent, again, Sandoval, (laughs) not Sandoval, oh gosh. Uh, James was just (laughs) like bringing so much comic relief. Yeah. I do feel, you know, the the whole thing with him when they talk about his drinking and he kind of just like deflects it right back onto Tom and and, and all of that. Like I understand it in, in this segment because it's true it's like tom is not one to be calling anyone out on anything in in this reunion yeah i think if someone else had done it maybe it would have been a little bit more fair Mm -hmm. i do think that james is a little bit lucky in the sense that i think he would have been under fire a lot more Mm -hmm. had all of this not happened yeah 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 i definitely agree with that um i think i think you're right i think he would have been like and and this is the segment too where Sandoval calls it out like that's the get out of jail free card for everything that happens in this reunion because I had this affair and it's like well yes (laughs) (laughs) but but it's also why does Sandoval yet again think that he needs to be kind of like the moral compass of this show and he needs to be the one to like out James for his bad behavior when Sandoval is clearly just trying to like deflect the blame like not the blame but like deflect away from himself and like go into somebody else's storyline and be like look all of us are bad all of us do bad things here's the example of what James did this year that's that's exactly it like it was a very Jax Taylor kind of calculated Mm. move to be like well look over there like (laughs) James is like drunk and belligerent (laughs) yeah you know like it's just even if like if what he's saying was true that James was like acting inappropriately kind of and like smacking girls like butts or whatever Mm -hmm. then yeah that's not okay behavior for sure yeah Yeah. it's just like Tom is not the one to be delivering this information and I feel like because he is it kind of just gets totally 
uh, blown past. Yeah. Well, and that's why I appreciated too that Lala did step in, right? And she said, you know, we can circle the drain, but like you two, like referring to Schwartz and Sandoval, because they both do drink quite a lot. And she says that, you know, you both drink very heavily. Yeah. Um, and you know, you don't you don't have to react this way. Like you don't need to kind of like be going after James in the way that you are right now. Um, and then obviously Sandoval's like, yeah, well, I don't smack girls on the bum <laughs> that's exactly what he said um, <laughs> and, and then and of course that is when it then like devolves into like ariana being like no you just f my friend <laughs> which i love i just yeah. i honestly like i loved her retorts to everything it was yeah it was amazing yeah <sighs> uh yeah it's uh it's been a pretty chaotic uh episode <laughs> I'm actually like I I'm actually getting like a little bit burnt out. Like it's just oh, it's so much. Oh my god. <laughs> I am so burnt out. Like I feel like I have to like force myself to like listen to podcasts. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, miss. Uh listen <laughs> to podcasts that are not about Sandoval. No, sorry, not, not about Scandoval and not about Vanderpump rules and like not about like anything else. Like I just like unplug because it's just too much. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought but I'd hear the are. day. Here we are talking yeah. about it anyways. Cause yeah. we got <laughs> Cause we gotta and we, we only have like we only have oh. one more episode, right? Like we only have one more to go. So we're and almost we're just there. so committed. Like we're it's so just committed. like it's you we're all just kind of like a part of it. Like I'll literally yeah. have conversations with my boyfriend being like, I can't believe this <laughs> happened. <laughs> I know I feel like Scott like went from like knowing zero things about Vanderpump Rules to knowing like all the things about Vanderpump Rules so much so that he's even watching it with me now which is a a feat because he said he would never watch it um and yet now here we are everyone gets sucked (laughs) in eventually everybody all all roads lead back to Sandoval and (laughs) Scandoval that being said I am so excited for next week I really I really hope it's going to be as juicy as they've been teasing it to be I want to know what this big reveal is I don't have super high hopes for the big reveal no um but I do I am just curious to see how it plays out with Raquel Mm -hmm. yeah I'm really excited to see how this goes down um I'm also just excited because I feel like it's gonna set us up pretty well for season 11 um I'm really excited to kind of see how that takes shape um yeah it's gonna be a good one hopefully let us know your thoughts let us know what you guys are thinking and feeling how you're feeling are you feeling burnt out from all of this because we're feeling burnt out from all of this um and yeah let us know if you have any predictions for next week's uh big reveal as well 